Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Services at the North Downey Church of Christ. It's the month of March. It's March 7, 2021, and we're so glad that you could be with us. Today's sermon is called Remember This Day, and we hope to have this be a memorable day as David will be preaching to us from Exodus chapter 13. Uh, it's a new month, and we have new Power for Todays for those of you who follow the daily devotionals each day of the week. This is for April, May, and June, so you can pick that up in the foyer and make plans to uh, study each day and hopefully grow spiritually with a song and a prayer and a little story to get you going. Or, like me, I take it before I go to sleep at night, so that way I have some more nice, clean thoughts. As when you're watching the news and there's all these terrible things in your head, it's like, I really don't like going to bed with that. So I've skipped that and I'll do the power for today. Keep, we also have new calendars. They're in the foyer. If you go on our website, you can also download the calendars for March and their number of birthdays, including David Moorhead's birthday that's coming up next week. Next week, you're going to be another year older, and maybe I'll brush up on the put another candle on the birthday cake song. You don't want that many candles on the cake, though. Yeah, I know. We're going to get whatever fire alarms we have will be going off. That's right. That's yeah. Right. But uh, also, Something really important, if you don't remember anything I tell you about right now, remember this. Next Sunday is Time Change Sunday, and it's going to be the rough one. We spring forward, so that means next week at this time, instead of it being 10-13, it'll be 11-13 and services will be over. So we don't want you coming to church when services are over. So set your clocks Saturday night, leap forward. I'm one of these people like, Last night I went to bed at 8 o'clock, so like before I go to bed, set the clock and then wake up and leave one of them around so that way you can look and say, did it work? Did I really do it? And, uh, but that is next Sunday, Time Change Sunday, and a lot of things will be going on in March. Keep in your prayers, LaFanya, Teresa, and Jana Lee, all of them are dealing with breast cancer. Jana Lee had a double mastectomy last Monday, and she seems to be doing good with that. Lafani will be having more uh, chemotherapy treatments uh, this, I believe it's this Wednesday. So they'll be doing chemotherapy number five of six. So then they'll assess that and see what happens from there. And also keep Teresa in your prayers. Remember, she's also going through the loss of her husband and her son. So it's a triple whammy for her. So keep Teresa Strickland and this whole Strickland family in your prayers as well. Also remember, Barbara Robertson is with us today. We're going, to, we're going to mention that we need to continue to pray for her, and she's here. God answers prayers. Bless us with Barbara being here. We're glad to see you, Barbara. Also, keep Oscar Gonzalez in your prayers. You know, he's going through dementia, and the family's had to put him in a home, and he doesn't like that. You know, he says, I don't belong here. And everybody who, if you've known anybody who's going through dementia, they all say that. I don't belong here when you're in the, one of those homes. And there's times when you do belong there, and that's the problem. So keep Oscar in your prayers as well because he's having a hard time adjusting with that. Also keep Tomas and Georgina Martin in your prayers. They haven't been able to be with us uh, for the whole year now. So keep them in your prayers as well as they deal with the COVID virus themselves. Also Dennis Hecklesburg. As far as I know, we still haven't been able to find where Dennis is. Uh, I know Stanley's been out looking for him. So keep Dennis in your prayers. Remember he had part of his leg amputated. Uh, just a, what, a couple of months ago. So keep Dennis in your prayers. And to help us with the practice of prayer, Bob Moonswami is in the Lord's house and he's going to come forward and lead us in an opening prayer. Brother Bob Moonswami. Morning church, let's uh, bow our heads. Pray to God. Oh Lord in heaven, thank you, Lord, for this Sunday in March, the Lord's Day. And the fact that we in church today is very special. Lord, as we look around, it's easy to forget how special we are. Even if you look around, we see so many lifeless planets around us. No one is so sure why there's so many of them, dear Lord, but you do. We know you look down 
upon us, protecting us, dear God, on any, in any given day from all these external forces. Life is precious. Life comes from you. We thank you, Lord, for this new day and for being here. Even though we survived the night, it is because of you. Let this morning be a time to praise you, to thank you, to love you, and as a reminder that you are the Almighty One. So Lord, as we dedicate this day to you, we are so mindful of all our brothers and sisters who are not here in attendance. Help them to endure. Bring them back to us, your house, this house of worship. Bless, dear Lord, all who are in church today. We are so glad we can be with them so we can all worship together. What a blessing. Be with us, Lord, as we sing praises to you. Bless our humble table. And we thank you, Lord, for David and his family. And we do look forward to your message from him. Bless this great country of all, Lord. She dearly needs you. And please, we ask you to forgive us for all our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Bob. If you turn in your songbooks to song number 200, the song is Hallelujah, Praise Jehovah. And that's what we're here for, is to worship God. It's great to be able to see one another and to share stories and things, but the reality is we come together to worship God. We'll sing all three verses of song number 200, Hallelujah, Praise Jehovah, which is from Psalms 148. <coughs> Hallelujah, praise Jehovah, from the heavens praise his name. Praise Jehovah from the highest, all his angels praise proclaim. All his hosts together praise him, sun and moon and stars on high. Praise him, O ye heaven of heavens, and ye floods above the sky. Let them praise us, give Jehovah, for his name alone is high. And his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted far above the earth and sky. Let them praises give Jehovah, they were made at his command. Them forever he established, his decree shall ever stand. From the earth, O oh, praise Jehovah, all ye floods, ye dragons all. Fire and hail and snow and vapors, stormy winds that hear him call. Let them praise his give Jehovah, for his name alone is high. And his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted far above the earth and sky. All ye fruitful trees and cedars, all ye hills and mountains high, Creeping things and beasts and cattle, birds that in the heavens fly, kings of earth and all ye people, princes greater, judges all. Praise his name, young men and maiden, aged men and children small. 
Let them praise his give Jehovah, for his name alone is high. And his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted far above the earth and sky. Amen. Turn to song number 22. The song is a great Fanny Crosby song. It is all the way my Savior leads me. And I know in David's sermon, there's going to be some kind of leading going on there. So this is one of the things to prep us for that. We'll sing all three verses and then we'll have another prayer. Song 22, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in him to dwell. For I know whate'er befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know whate'er befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, cheers each winding path I tread. Give me peace for every trial, feeds me with thy living bread. Though my weary steps may falter, and my soul a thirst may be, Gushing from the rock of ages, before me low a spring of life I see. Gushing from the rock before me, low a spring of life I see. All the way my Savior leads me, oh the fullness of his love. Perfect rest for me is promised in my Father's house above. When my spirit, clothed immortal, wings its flight to realms of day, this my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. Let's go to God in prayer. Holy Creator, we come in thankfulness, thankful for another day of life, for we remember that there are those who we know and love who have passed away, and yet here we are still on this earth. We realize that we're here for a purpose, we realize that you have plans for us, and we pray, Lord, that you can give us the strength and the courage and the abilities to fulfill those plans, just like you've done in the other biblical characters throughout God's word. We pray that we can be a part of that, a part of God's family, a part of the hope of salvation, a part of the quest for eternal life, and a part of the joy that comes from serving the Savior. Father, we pray for those that are sick and hurting and those who can't be here. Pray for Judy Moorhead, who can't be here, and also Cindy Jacobs, who are both feeling under the weather. Pray for those with cancer, including LaFanya and Teresa and Jana. We ask that you heal them of their cancers. And Father, we know there are other people who are having cancer troubles. And we, Father, we pray that you remove this disease from the earth, for this once was good, but it's been corrupted. And we pray, Lord, that this corruption can be canceled out. Father, we also ask to be with those who are hurting in fiscal ways, including Tomas and Georgina Martin, and also Dennis Hecklesburg, and Cindy's niece, Erica. Father, we ask that you bless them with healing. Father, we pray that you'll be with David as he brings us a message from God's word. We ask that you be with Bob as he leads us in the communion service. And we ask that you be with each one of us as we go out into the mission field that is this world, for it's a tough world. It's not as easy as it once was. The fields aren't white for the harvest, Jesus once spoke of. Instead, we have to go through the rocks and the thistles and the thorns. We pray, Lord, that you'll help us to overcome. 
Be with us in all things. Bless us in Jesus' holy name. Amen. To get ready for the Lord's Supper, I'm going to ask you to turn to song number 644, Tis Set the Feast Divine. Song 644, it's just two verses, short verses. This will get us ready for the Lord's Supper, and Bob will be leading us in that. We'll sing 644, Tis Set the Feast Divine. Tis set the feast divine, the bread, the fruit of the vine, and saints commune before the shrine in the supper of the Lord. May we the Lord discern his death our holy concern. We feast in faith his coming yearn in the supper of the Lord. <coughs> You know, the unleavened bread, um, besides taking it in church, I can't think of another place we take it. It's so special, it's done here. And um, David was mentioning last week about the yeast, the yeast in the bread, and most of the time when you go out, you know, you, the bread, there's yeast in it. And um, there's some restaurant that still serve, uh, it's called Lavash, and some Armenian people still eat it, but. Most of the time, you don't. And I thought also that the, um, that and the, um, I'm going off also with David over the, the 10 plagues. And what I thought of, you know, on those plagues, how he directed it, he sent a message on each one of those uh, against the frogs and uh, the gods. And we forget, you know, God is a jealous God. You, know, you should follow him. And um, I'm so happy that we keep that little tradition of the unleavened bread. Shall we pray? Almighty God in heaven, you're a God to be feared, but also you're a God to be loved. Your sacrifice, your son, as he torn into that bread and he made that covenant with us. Lord, <laughs> In church, we are so grateful that we are on your side. And we are hoping whenever we do this service at this table, it is pleasing to you. We ask you, Lord, to accept us and accept this tradition at this table. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> As we continue with the cup, um, I, last week I spoke a little bit about the bitter cup. I just want to expand a little bit on that. You know, um, like I said, Jesus, you know, something he probably didn't want to do. And um, that bitterness, we, we have this now all, all our lives. Things we do not want to do, things we question, say, why me? But if you think of bitter decisions in your life, the ones that you make because it'll benefit other people, you make it because it's a sacrifice. And those are the ones really that pay off in the long run. Shall we pray? Dear God in heaven, this is a wonderful lesson with this cup. Lord, there's so many different parts of it, the forgiveness, a sacrifice. Lord, may us, as we go through our own lives, may we be mindful of all the good things that could come out of this when we make sacrifices 
our own sacrifices in our own lives, particularly when they're devoted to you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, it's great that we're studying the Old Testament because I love studying the Old Testament because there's some foundational truths that are there that we often forget. First one is that, and David is getting to this, I'm not trying to steal from his sermon, but every firstborn man, woman, and woman or child all belong to God. Also all the firstborn beasts of the field, all these other things, everything belongs to God. And then here we are and we say, what can we give to God? And God has asked us to give, even though he owns everything each first day of the week. That's because he wants us to remember who belongs to everything. And that's God. Let's go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for giving to us. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for being with us and guiding us through all these days. Father, we pray that we can give back in a way that can be humble, in a way that can glorify your name, and in a way that can save others as well. Bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' holy name, amen. You get a chance. If you haven't put in anything in, you can do this at the end of service. We'll just take this away. If you turn in your songbooks to song number 772 and use your maroon <laughs> marker to mark that song. That song will be the song of invitation after David's sermon today. Song 772. Songs, a song against procrastination. Why do you wait? So use your maroon marker and mark there. And usually, lately I haven't been singing a song before the sermon, but this song is directly related to Exodus chapter 13. And that's song number 193, and that's Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. 193. So we'll sing this and getting our mindset for David's sermon on Exodus chapter 13. I know you've been waiting patiently, so we'll just. We'll do all three verses. It's a short song. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Open now the crystal fountain whence the healing waters flow. Let the fiery, cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through. Strong deliver, be thou still my strength and shield. Strong deliver. Be thou still my strength and shield. When I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fears subside. Bear me through the swelling current, land me safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, I will ever give to thee. Songs of praises I will ever give to thee. David, take us to the promised land. Thank you, Robert, and yes, I'll do the best I can to get you the promised land, <laughs> at least in the book. Uh, and, and thank you, Bob, for your good words. Uh, always appreciate your words at the table. And of course, what Robert mentioned earlier about, about the firstborn, we'll talk about that too. 
and I hope that all is well with you, those of you who are at home. And um, it's always exciting to hear about the fact that there are people out there that I, I mention every week, those who are out there that we have not met that are watching us or watching our, our services and, uh, and our Friday night uh, lessons as well. So uh, you're welcome. Uh, those of you who are out there, we don't know you. We hope to know you. And uh, keep tuning in, if you will, and bring your friends and family and, and neighbors and, of course, those who are members uh, who are still a little nervous about coming in. Uh, and we can understand that. Uh, you're certainly welcome to, to watch us, and maybe someday down the road we'll all get to get together in here. It's, it's a good day. It's a good Sunday. Well, I'm going to be from... Uh, I almost said Acts. <laughs> That's Friday night. I'm going to be in Exodus uh, chapter 13 today. And uh, what I will do is I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 10 of Exodus uh, chapter 13. This is what it says. <coughs> <Pardon. coughs> then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Consecrate to me, all the firstborn, whatever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and beast, it is mine. And Moses said to the people, remember this day in which you went out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by strength of hand the Lord brought you out of this place. No leavened bread shall be eaten. And on this day you are about to go out in the day of Abim. And it shall be, or in the month of Abib, I should say, and it shall be when the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Jebusites, which he swore to your fathers to give you a land flowing with milk and honey that you shall keep this service in this month. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. And on the seventh day, there shall be a feast to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and no leavened bread shall be seen among you, nor shall leaven be seen among you in all your quarters. And you shall tell your son in that day, This is done because of what the Lord did for me when I came up from Egypt. And it shall be as a sign to you on your hand and as a memorial between your eyes that the Lord's law may be in your mouth for with a strong hand the Lord has brought you out of Egypt. You shall therefore keep this ordinance in its season from year to year. May God bless this reading to his praise. The title of the lesson is Remember This Day. Remember This Day. Um, I love photographs. I, you know, I don't know. You say, well, what does this have to do with it? But I, it's a picture. I, and whenever the worst time or not good is good for me, not too great for if we're trying to clean up the house, is whenever I run across an album of pictures, I have to sit down and look at all the pictures, <laughs> even though I, I took the pictures, pictures of when the kids were little, pictures of when I was younger and thinner, pictures of our wedding, pictures of all these, uh, our homes and all this. And I just sit there and look at the pictures. And Judy would be working. I said, come here, honey. Look at these pictures. And it's interesting, isn't it, that they, they capture that moment. Remember the old television commercial, a Kodak moment? You know, it was, uh, you know, they say, you don't want to lose that moment of the kids playing or something. You want to snap this picture because you'll never get it again. You'll never get that moment again. But you'll capture it on, on paper, if you will, on film. Now you're able to go digital but you're able to capture that moment. Um, I think that's one of the great inventions, uh, besides all the wonderful inventions that we've had in our uh, world, um, automobiles, planes, things like that, the radio, television, all these, but the camera uh, has to be a wonderful invention because it, it did something that couldn't be done in the past. I mean, all people could do is remember with their heads. They can remember uh, things, and as, as long as your brain is working well, and uh, you know, you're healthy and you're able to remember things crisply. And they had things that would help them remember like poems and songs and things like this. Uh, that's why you know, you, the alphabet song, for example, A, B, C, D, the song helps us remember, right? 
And many things were, were taught by song and poetry so people could remember these things. But, but a picture, a picture is just something special. Before they did pictures, uh, before the camera was invented, and all of that, of course, if you ever look at the old newspapers from the 1800s and things like this, everything was drawn. You know, they had the, uh, an artist had to draw something and say, this is what this battle looked like and draw. And they'd, they'd have a special stamp for that and they'd put it on the printing press and there you'd have that. But that, that picture is wonderful. Well, uh, wouldn't it have been great if there was a camera in this day? <laughs> Wouldn't it have been wonderful if some, someone, if they had a camera or a movie camera or video or something like this of Moses speaking to this throng of people, talking to all these Hebrews, they're about to leave. This is nighttime too, right? They, uh, you know, they, they'd already, apparently they've, they've gotten the things from the Egyptians. They've, uh, they're preparing, they, they've prepared the, the meal and, uh, and they're, they're taking it. Remember, they had the dough and all of this, and they, they've eaten the lamb. And now they're ready for their journey. They're ready to go out and leave and, and leave their, their home of bondage, get that out of there and, and go to a new life. And Moses is telling them this. He tells them this, this uh, message. And, of course, the first part of it is about the consecration that God told Moses. And I'll read it again. Lord spoke to Moses. And said, consecrate to me, or, or put aside or separate. That's the word consecrate. You know, Put aside to me all the firstborn, whatever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. And as Robert so well put it, um, that this belonged to God. And someone would say, no, this is my kid. You can't have him. This is my, my animal. I don't, I don't want anyone to have him. Lord saying, you know, I've had a big part in rescuing you. All I'm asking for is your firstborn. And you know, long ago in the book of Exodus, it was the, that, that boy, that little boy, when it was born, that was the command of Pharaoh to kill all those baby boys and throw them into the water and let them drown. And now at this moment, God isn't saying, I want you to sacrifice your child or kill your child. I'm just saying, you are going to consecrate, set this child apart as mine. And, um, and then he says, I want you to do this with your animals too. The, the firstborn of your animals. So if you have a lamb, that belongs to me. You know, a cow, I guess, belongs to me. And as we read later on, there's one that, that God didn't want. We'll read about that in just a moment. But they said, I, I want you to do that. And so then it switches, and we'll talk a little bit more about this sacrifice, and then it switches into verse 3. It's like this is something God told Moses. Now Moses talks to the people as they're standing there, and he says, Remember this, this day in which you went out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. He said, so you are, you are, everything's going to be different now. I want you to look around, you know. That's basically it. You need to re remember this, capture this in your mind. A Kodak moment. Think about this day. Look where you've come from. Look at yourselves. Take a look at, ahead of us. This is the day you are leaving this place where you were slaves. Think about it. You were slaves, and now you're going to be free. What's that feeling like for someone to, to have that moment of freedom? I guess... Perhaps sometimes we, we read stories of, of people who were um, wrongfully accused of something and they'd been in prison for 20 years or something and then they, they find the correct the person who did the wrong and, and they let this person out and of course they might get a little money from the government. But you can't get back your life, right? You just, you, you've lost 20 years, but to have that sense of freedom uh, to go and about as you please be out there. To, to have a country, a whole country that would be liberated. You might recall, if you, know, you might look at the old newsreels when in World War II, after D-Day, when the Allies came into France and liberated this country. You ever seen those pictures, the, the women thronging the soldiers, kissing them, and, and all the flowers and everything. Hey, you've liberated us from those evil Nazis. You've saved us. And they were just so happy because they were under bondage at that moment. 
Well, here were these people 400 years, over 400 years in slavery. I mean, they couldn't remember a day of freedom in their whole lives. And this is going to be a whole new world for them. And so Moses says, you, you need to remember this. Don't forget it. You came out of the house of bondage. This was your home. Uh, it used this word of slavery, as a footnote says. And it's for by the strength of hand, the Lord brought you out of this place. It's interesting. He said, and then he tacks on to this statement, no leavened bread shall be eaten. So what does that have to do with anything? Remember, we mentioned last week that word leaven uh, basically was a, a symbol of death. He said, we don't want you to bring any of that death with you right now. Uh, and if you had this leavened bread, it was like that symbol. You know, don't, we don't want you to think about this. You are now free. But how did it happen? What, did you have a rebellion? Did you kill your masters? No. God did this as by a mighty hand that God has brought you out of this terrible slavery. It's a terrible thing, but he says God has brought you out. You know, there's, there's a big parallel to that, to, to our own time. To those of us who have uh, put Jesus on in baptism that gave our hearts to Jesus and actually he rescued us. And there's that wonderful song, heaven came down and glory came to me, right? It's, and, and this is where Jesus came to us. He saved us and it was with a mighty hand. God's mighty hand saved them. How? Well, all these terrible plagues. You know, how else are you going to get the Egyptians to give you up? All the way up to the firstborn to die. But now here, the Lord has used in his mighty hand the death of his son on the cross to get us out. And it's a time to remember that. And we just did. We had the Lord's Supper. And we do this every Sunday, right? Memory is so important. That's why... Um, I think Robert's brought this up a few times in the past. There, there are some uh, churches, if you will, who will have the Lord's Supper maybe once every quarter, you know, once every three months, or maybe once a year, or maybe never. But why? Why would you do that? Um, why would you miss that? Why would you miss out on that memory? Would you miss out on your birthday memory? Would you, would you miss out on the 4th of July? So, well, let's have the 4th of July every five years. You know, it's such a such an inconvenience for us and all that loud noise that they have at the fireworks. No, we have it every year, right? But what about every week? Well, I don't know if that's sort of inconvenience. Well, this is a time to remember this is what God has done for me. By his mighty hand, he, was, he has saved me from this dark world. I have eternal life. Well, and he says, don't bring the bread. And then he tells them on this day, verse four, you're going out in the month of Abib, which is their month, right? And it shall be when the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, and the Amorites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, you know all these people, right? <laughs> right? Which he swore to your fathers to give you a land flowing with milk and honey that you shall keep this service in this month. This promise goes all the way back to Genesis. And hundreds of years, hundreds of years have passed. But it was a promise that God made. It's a reminder. God keeps his promises. God promises this is going to happen and I'm going to give you this land. Moses stepped, uh, not Moses, Abraham stepped on that land. God says, this, this, this is going to be yours. You, you're going to have it. You may not personally be here, but you are going to have lots and lots of kids. And your, your family is going to be great. And you're going to have this land. Your people will have this land. The land that had these enemies in it. And of course now, this is going to be later on. I, I'm not even sure if the Egyptian, the, these Hebrew slaves even knew these names. The, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the, the Amorites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. They were all tribes that were running that land, which we, we would know is called Canaan land. Israel, they all had a piece of that land. Well, how are you going to get these people out? Don't worry about it. God's going to take you. We'll take care of it. And then when we get to that place, God will take care of this. He's going to help us out. Right now, our concern is getting out of this slavery. But he says he's going to fulfill this promise. A land flowing with milk and honey. That means, you know, lots of cows and lots of fruit and things like this and food. 
And so then he says, seven days, he gets into this, this, this festival, that's this celebration. Seven days, you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day, there shall be a feast to the Lord. And when we get to the actual Passover meal, we're going to talk about those elements of the meal. Uh, you know, when we have Thanksgiving, I recall, refer to that many times, you know, we always have the turkey. Well, I shouldn't. Some people have the uh, ham, I suppose. <laughs> have the turkey because that's always the guest of honor at the meal. Uh, and, of course, uh, having a vegetarian now in my family, we've had to get some synthetic turkey or whatever. I have no idea what they put in there. <laughs> I hope he enjoys it. But, uh, you know, we have that because it it's supposed to be a reminder of what the pilgrims went through. And, you know, we have our own way. We have a picture of a turkey out there and someone wearing a pilgrim hat. And I said, what's that about? Well, they, they came over here on the Mayflower and they, they had a tough winter. They got through, uh, people died. But then, you know, the, the Native Americans, the Indians were there and they helped them out. The tribes helped them out and they had this great meal together. Uh, it's a wonderful story and people say, oh, that's good. And even for those of us who don't know the story very well, at least we have something. Oh, there's a guy with the hat and the, and the turkey. Well, think about this. He says, you're going to eat unleavened bread for seven days, right? You, you don't have any kind of bread, full bread, although I like good bread, you know. <laughs> but he says, you're, you, you keep, keep that because it's a little sacrifice for yourself. And then on that seventh day, you're going to have a feast. Unleavened bread shall be seven days. No leavened bread shall be seen among you. Remember we said that was about death, leaven, right? Nor shall leaven be seen among you in all your quarters. You shouldn't have this around you at this time. And then there will be this moment. Uh, and you know, we read about this in Exodus chapter 10. And it is practiced today in Jewish communities. A child is going to ask the question. Usually it's the youngest child. They have the meal Daddy, what does this mean? Why are we eating this? Why are we having this meal? And uh, if you ever have any Jewish friends and have a Passover meal with them, they'll do this. And, and he says, you shall tell your son in that day, this is done because of what the Lord did for me. That's interesting. He's not saying did for our country, which he did. But he said what he did for me. That's, that's, that's important to think about. You ever thought about this? You know, it's what God did for me. You know, what, what did Jesus do for me? And when I, my personal sins, my life, what did Jesus do for me? He did a lot for me. He died on the cross. That's for me. I think that's, that's a refrain in one of our songs. For me, he did this. He did this for me. And so this, this is where you personalize it. It says, I personally am experiencing freedom. This is done because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. And by the way, what about all those people later on, all the future generations, uh, the, the generations who live today, the Jewish generation, when they have the Passover, are they saying, God did this for me? Well, they're celebrating for what happened to them and the good things that happened to them. So he said, this shall be a sign to you on your uh, hand and as a memorial between your eyes that the Lord's law may be in your mouth. For with a strong hand, there we go again, that strong hand, the Lord brought you out of Egypt. You know what they're talking about? He says, you need to keep this in front of you. This, we just have short memories. Too bad they didn't have a picture camera there. But he said, we, we have such short memories. And he says, what you need to do is take God's law. And they would have these little strips. I don't know, I think of a fortune cookie, but nothing like that. But and these little pouches, maybe a little, they call them cubicles, little pouches. And you would put in there a kind of a, a, a written part of the law of God, God's word, you know. And they put the pouches and you did a couple of things. One, you could bind it to your arm, you know. And uh, it would have that pouch hanging around your arm, you know. And, uh, oh, and the other one would be that you'd hang in front of your eyes. How would you do that? Well, that's why you see, see the shawl. You know, you see these pictures of the Jewish men, uh, maybe old paintings and things like this. They would have this, and they would have this little pouch hanging down, you know. Uh, 
some people would have a couple of these. Some would have a number of pouches hanging down, you know. And it's it very much like the story. Remember the woman who had the bleeding problem for years and, and she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. Why? What was on the hem of the garment? The pouches. Jesus wore this too, you know. And so it was like, you're going to keep this in front of you. How, how, every day? Yeah. Every day, he said, uh, it'll be a sign to you. What's the sign? About the salvation, about the fact you've been saved. He says, you need to remember this every day. <laughs> Perhaps today, oh, I wouldn't, uh, but maybe a tattoo. <laughs> what if you had a tattoo like that? You know, Jesus saved me. I'm not saying, I'm not encouraging people to do that. There's, there was a picture that I saw uh, in the newspaper, one of the Christian Chronicles, of an elder who did this, and he had tattooed on his arm these little symbols. One was an arrow pointed down, and then there was another arrow with the, or another sign of a cross. And then another arrow pointing up. And I thought, uh, that's interesting. And you know that's a conversation starter because someone's going to say, well, what's, what's that? About? And that was right. He can say, well, Jesus came down. He died on the cross. He was, he was resurrected and I'm saved. And that would be, that's his talking point. I'm not encouraging you to go out and do that. <laughs> but that's what he did. And, and that's what the Lord was telling them. So you guys really need to remember this because there's going to be a time when you'll forget. So he said, keep remembering these things. You shall therefore keep this ordinance in its season from year to year. And he says, when, when the Lord, verse 11, brings you into the land of the Canaanites, he swore to you and your fathers and gives it to you. You shall set apart to the Lord all that open the womb. That is the very firstborn that comes from an animal which you have and the males shall be the Lord's, but every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb. I'll get to that in just a moment. If you'd like, if you could turn over here to, to Numbers chapter 3. Numbers chapter 3. Um, interesting verse. Numbers uh, chapter 3, verse 12. Um, we understand, well, you know, what about, who are these people that are being set apart, the firstborn? Well, we get a clue here. From Numbers chapter 3, it tells us this, verse 12. God said this, the Lord said to Moses, right? Verse 11, then 12, he says, Now behold, I myself, God is saying, have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of every firstborn who opens a womb among the children of Israel. Therefore, the Levites shall be mine, because all the firstborn are mine. On the day that I struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I sanctified to myself all the firstborn in Israel. Remember, they didn't die, right? They didn't die, whereas the Egyptians died. Both man and beast, they shall be mine. I am the Lord. And so we say that there's more. I think I, I gave too many verses, but um, then the Lord spoke to Moses saying in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, number the children of Levi by their father's houses, by their families, and you shall number every male from a month old and above. And he numbered them. But he said, this is what it is. So a Levite, this goes back to the Old Testament. You say, well, who are these Levites? Well, now we know. God said, they're mine. They're my people. And so what they will do is that their job is to serve me. They get no land, by the way. They, they don't have their own little piece of property. But what their job is to serve me. So I'm getting your firstborn, and they're going to serve me. And I'm getting your firstborn animals. They're going to serve me. They're all mine. And so they said, okay, fine. I got it. And that's what happened. By the way, you might remember the story of Hannah. And remember Hannah, she was without child. She was, you know, she was barren, as they say. And, um, she, and, and her husband said, don't worry, you still got me. That tells you a lot about this guy. But he sees, he, she said, I, I want a baby. And she cried and cried and prayed for it and everything. And then finally, the Lord gave her this child. But she, had, she dedicated this child to the Lord. Something she wanted, held so precious, wanted so bad. And now when the time came and she, the child was weaned, she gave him to the Lord. And the child named Samuel became one of the greats of the Old Testament. Well, we come back here to... Uh, 
to Exodus chapter 13, and then we see this about the donkey. Verse 13, every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb. Why? Well, there were animals that you wanted to, you know, and this is like one of those obscure questions you can answer at a, at a uh, trivia game or something like this. Why didn't he want to take a donkey? You know, he said, the other animals, I want the firstborn, right? The donkey was seen to be unclean. But he said, this is what you'll have to do, though. Uh, in his place, give a lamb. It's going to cost. Uh, give a lamb. And, uh, and if you don't want to give the lamb, if you say this costs too much, you're going to have to kill the donkey by breaking its neck. What a crazy thing. The donkey loses. Right? Uh, but the thing is this. He said, you know, this is going to cost you. You don't want to pay that price. It's going to still cost you. You see, that's what sacrifice is all about. He says, all the firstborn of man among your sons you shall redeem, right? And that was the redemption that we have. That's, that's, that's the amazing thing about this, that it, it costs something. It costs something. That's why God says, you know, I'm bringing you up, but this is going to cost, this is a price you're having to pay. You don't get out of here for free. You're going to, there's going to be a cost. The Bible tells the same thing. And when the Lord looked at us, as the Apostle Paul says, says you were bought at a price. There's a, you were value, it cost God a lot. It was his own son who died on the cross for us. You were bought at a price. And I set the price, and I paid the price. And that's what the Lord has said to us. Well, I have some more verses to look at, if you will. Turn over here to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3, and we'll go a couple, a little, some of these verses, and then we will close. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. It says this, <clears throat> and this is, this is the wonder that, uh, that John has about this. He thinks about it. He says, uh, John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, not the book of John, but 1 John. Chapter 3, verse 1, he says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. And in my Bible, there's this exclamation point, boom. He said, this is amazing. What manner of God that God showed his love for his people that he could have just ignored them, but he brought them out of Egypt. And now for us, we're living in a spiritual house of bondage. We are the slaves of the world if we don't have Jesus. And he said, God bestowed upon us his love to be called children of God. He adopted us. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Another verse I'd show to you is 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 9, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 9, and it says this, if I, I think I have it, yeah, it says, uh, and I think I'll back up here, <coughs> pardon me, to verse 8. Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, uh, Paul is saying this to Timothy, but share with me in the sufferings of the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us, and this is the powerful thing, he has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace into which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. This is an amazing thing. He says, you know, those slaves, there, there was nothing they could have done to earn their way out of Egypt. You know, they, there was nothing, there was nothing. They were powerless they're slaves. They had nothing to give. But God showed his love for them in that. And here, God calls us and he has a holy calling and not according to what I do. I, if, if, he, if my salvation depended completely on my pitiful works on this earth, I, I would be lost all the time. Even the best of us could never get to heaven on our own. We just couldn't do it, no matter how good we are. But it's by the grace of Jesus Christ, it's by his love for us. It was according to his purpose and grace that he was given to us in Jesus before time began, even before you were born, before any of us were born. God had this planned out. Another verse is John chapter 10, verse 27, going back and forth. John chapter 10, and uh, verse 27 and 29. <laughs> And uh, verse 27 through 29, you should say, My sheep, Jesus said this, John chapter 10, Hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. 
and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Think about that. It was God's hand that brought the people out of Egypt. It's God's hand that gives us salvation. He says, no one is gonna take us out of there. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one, no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. Not Satan. Nobody can snatch us out of our father's hand. No one can force us out of there, out of our salvation. Amazing statement that he makes. And finally, last verse is 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. I know I'm having you go back and forth through the Bible. It's a good exercise though, right? 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. He says, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. There's that word, that mighty hand, you know. He says, that he may exalt, he says, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. The mighty hand of God. He brought the people out of Egypt and gave them a new world, a new life, a whole new world. That like the song goes, right? He brought us out of this world of darkness by his mighty hand that pressed his son to die on the cross. And now we have this. We have this new world, this new life for us and heaven waiting for us. And he says, you humble yourselves under that mighty hand and he will exalt us. It's not by my strength. It's not by my power, not by any money that I can give to the church or anything like that. It is by the grace of Jesus Christ. That's why is great to be a Christian. Our song again is what? Why do you wait? Song 772. Why do you wait? That's what my tax lady says to me. Why have you waited to put, file your taxes? But there's more than that. Why do you wait? If there's someone waiting to put Jesus on, to be believe in Jesus, to accept him as your Lord and Savior, to be baptized in the Christ. Uh, those of you who are watching, you know who you are. If you're not saved, don't let a day pass. God is waiting to save you. He wants you to give your life to him. And uh, it may cost, right? But if you want to do that, make that decision today. If you do not have access to uh, a church or baptistry, let us know. We'll, we'll be happy to help you. And those of us who are in the building, if anyone needs to come forward uh, for encouragement or prayers, whatever it is, we're here to help in any way we can. Let us all sing at this time. Why do you wait, dear brother? Oh, why do you tarry so long? Your Savior is waiting to give you a place in his sanctified throng. Why not, why not, why not come to him now? Why not, why not, why not come to him now? What do you hope, dear brother? <laughs> to gain by a further delay. There's no one to save you but Jesus. There's no other way but his way. Why not, why not, why not come to him now? Why not, why not, why not come to you now? Why do you wait, dear brother? The harvest is passing away. Your Savior is longing to bless you. There's danger and death in delay. Why not, why not, why not come to him now? Why not, why not, why not come to him now? Amen. David, send us home with a prayer. Okay, I sure will. Again, uh, thank you, Robert, for the singing. Appreciate all of that. And it is something to think about. Why wait? Don't wait. Um, hope you have a wonderful week. I hope the, all things work well. Be healthy. Be careful. Be safe. Uh, be faithful. Trust the Lord throughout all of this. This too shall pass what's going on in our life, whether it's a disease or politics or all the problems that are going. That will all pass. What will stay forever is is our salvation, Jesus Christ. And so I hope this is all good for you. Let me read this to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you 
and give you peace. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, God, for what we've read, what we've studied. Thank you, God, for what you did for those, those poor slaves back then. We know it's hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of years since that all happened. Father, in maybe some ways we can't identify with it, but we can when we think about what life would be like uh, in a world where everything I've done is controlled, um, kept in poverty, forced to work hard, building pyramids and all that. What a hard thing. And yet this had to be a true shock, God, to those people to say, good morning, you've got a new day, you know, new life. And it's because of that strong hand of yours, God. And today, Heavenly Father, we're, uh, we, we think about that strong hand today. You protect us. You give us eternal life. You've, you've saved us because of your son. You, you, you just care about it. your hand is there protecting us. And uh, we pray, God, for that. We pray our faith would be strong in you. And we pray that our hearts would be right with you. And we thank you every day, God, that you forgive us of our sins. And we know that we're not perfect. We fall down, we fall short, we make mistakes. But we know, God, that you promise us that you're still there. You still love us and you take care of us. So we pray, God, that this lesson will have been a blessing to all. And we pray that we will bless you for all the good that you are, who you are, how wonderful you are as our God. And bless your son, Jesus Christ, and to bless the Holy Spirit who makes our time together here possible. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. God bless you and keep you. We'll see you next time.